Michael Push, good afternoon. Hey. Hello. Hey, Michael, it's Ken Savage of Lanka White. Hey, Ken, how you doing? Great to say hello. Yeah, it's great to say hello. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Yeah, and you're in, you're in Paris. I'm in Paris, France. Yes, sir. So I, I believe it's um, board shorts and sunscreen weather over there. It's about uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I've been I've been watching the weather and it's been uh, the whole of Europe's been pretty miserable. Yeah, and it's just getting colder and colder. This morning is the worst in France has been all year. Uh, so you're you're a good man to get some rock and roll happening to warm things up. Let's do it. I'm excited about it. <laughs> and and this new project, the resurgence of rock and Blanca White, mate, is uh, is really good stuff. I love it a lot. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. It was uh, it was a couple of years in the making, and uh, we pulled out all the stops, and we're really excited about how it turned out. C- coming from Australia, ACDC is, is ingrained into us. We just live and breathe it, and have done for for thirty years, and. And and you've really captured the essence of, of I think what uh, what bands like ACDC have that 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 uh, that tongue in cheek that um, that that sense of humour that a lot a lot of rock and roll doesn't have. Well, you know, ACDC was really probably my biggest model in terms of writing the lyrics on on our album Resurgence of Rock. Uh, you know, especially a lot of the earlier stuff that was really kind of tongue in cheek and cheeky and. Uh, kind of made you grin it was really just fun music uh they, they were they were really probably foremost in my mind as i was writing the lyrics uh uh for, for the song uh, they're, they're a huge influence on this album uh i grew up in texas even though i've lived in europe now for about 10 years and you know we love acdc in the states as well and uh really i think probably acdc and van halen were the two biggest you know influences on this particular album and and the title track Ken pays pays a lot of tribute to to both those bands as as well of as well as a lot of other great music. Yeah, the title track pays tribute to those two bands as well as a lot of our other influences. Um, um, you know, there were more influences beyond those listed in the song, but I tried to get in as many as I could and, and write the lyrics for the title track, Resurgence of Rock. Uh, the last song on the album, Woman's Side, is also a very ACDC-esque type song. It's, a, it's meant to be really tongue-in-cheek. It's, it's a song about the guy just wanting to sit back and have a beer and watch a ball game, and the, and the miss is nagging him all the time. And uh, uh, that one really turned out pretty ACDC-esque as well. And I want to I want to ask you about some of the great vocalists that are on the uh, on the album in a moment. But but your partner in crime for this one is a guy that I don't know that much about. Um, I believe from Texas as well, Austin Shell. Yeah, Austin's been a uh, Austin, Texas has a really lively music scene. It's one of the great music uh, towns in the in the state, and uh, you know it's probably only behind really L.A. and New York and Nashville in terms of its music scene and. Austin's been really uh, active in the music scene in Austin, Texas for a long time. We call him Austin from Austin, but, mm. you know, he's a real student of music. He plays all different kinds of instruments, and he's really the musical genius behind the album. Uh, he wrote the music for each of the songs. Uh, I wrote the lyrics for each of them. He wrote the music, and he's, he's, just, got, he's just got so much uh, ability to match uh, the music to the lyrics that the songs just turned out really well. Um, but just to give you an example of his talent, uh, we have a ballad on the on the anthem. It's the eighth song on, on Resurgence of Rock. Uh, it's it's titled Hundred Years War, and it's actually written with kind of a medieval modal kind of progression to it. It's not a modern progression at all. And but Austin's so talented, you know, he knows he knows how music was happening four or five hundred years ago. Uh, and uh, just kind of an example of how talented he is. He, he, from what I've heard, uh, I totally agree with you. And and I guess even on the other side of the world, Ken, we you know South by Southwest in uh, in Austin is such a huge thing, even for uh, for bands from Australia. So I, I do I do agree. Austin is uh, is a big rock and roll city in the, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, it really is. It's 
it's just got such an active, creative uh, music scene, and uh, you yeah, know this 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 project and this album, Resurgence of Rock, were really common, uh, kind of a combination of Los Angeles and Austin. Um, our singers are based on the West Coast, and some of our marketing and publicity and other stuff is based on the West Coast. But a lot of the the music for the album uh, came from uh, from folks in Austin, Texas. Well, let's talk about some of the great singers on the uh, on the album, Ken and, and Paul Shortino. First up is uh, is a name that I'm very familiar with. Uh, he is a great singer. I've had the uh, the pleasure of having him on the show. He's a lovely fella, and uh, what a great vocalist he is. Yeah, he's an extraordinary vocalist, as are our other three, and he's also just an extraordinary human being. It was a, they, they, these, these singers that we've got on the album, all four of them, were just so professional. Uh, and, and such good folks to work with. Um, I think what they really liked the most about working on this album was that we gave them a lot of freedom and latitude to really make the songs their own. And, you know, they each kind of adopted each of the songs that they were doing and, and put their real spirit and, and personality into them. Uh, Paul, Paul, in particular, has kind of the gravelly voice that we were looking for uh, for, for several of the songs. Um, you know, he's got just such a classic hard rock voice. He, as you know, he sang with Quiet Riot, uh, as well as Rough Cut and King Cobra. And, but he's, but he's, in particular, he's got kind of the, the voice, the specific voice that we were looking for for three of our songs. So he does, uh, he does three of the nine songs on the album. And and one of them, living it up in a Mexican bar, is uh, is is one of my favourites. There's a there's a couple of little snippets of. Uh, of some little Mexican bits of music that we know well, and it's uh, it's very clever how you've done that. <laughs> That's actually my favorite song on the album. Uh, that song is based on growing up on the Texas border as a teenager, and back in those days in the '80s, Mexico used to be a safe place to go, and and we we all we all would go across the border on on the weekends and live it up in that bar. Uh, the bar was actually called Blanca White, which is the name we adopted for, for our group. Uh, that song is a very kind of literal description of, of living it up in a Mexican bar as a youngster. Uh, so we, we had a lot of fun with that. But yeah, it's a, it's a fun song. We've got some, uh, uh, some Latin percussion, uh, some, some fairly exotic, uh, uh, Mexican and Central American, uh, instruments on that song. We've got some bar scenes. The kind of in, in the intro and the outro for the song. Also in the chorus, one of the neat little things we've got in the song is we have a couple of snippets from the from the Mexican bar songs, tequila and Mexican hat dance, that show up in the chorus of that song. So it's it's just a fun song through and through, and I hope people really get a kick out of it. It's a cool song. It it, it would make it would make a great western. <laughs> <laughs> It would make a great western or a great video. You're right. <laughs> and and uh, one of the other singers is a lady by the name of Lorraine Lewis, who who I, I'm familiar with from Femme Fatale, but they 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 didn't make a great impact over this side of the world. But man, she is one hell of a singer. She is one hell of a singer. She's also a tremendous human being. Uh, but yeah, we, you know, we we when we started this project a couple of years ago, we always wanted to have a couple of songs on the album that were sung by a really strong female hard rock vocalist from the 80s. And, you know, there aren't, there aren't too many of them. I mean, we really had to scour the planet to, to find Lorraine. Uh, but she does a tremendous job. She does two songs on the album. She does that ballad I was talking about earlier called Hundred Years War. She's also got a song on the album called Still Turning Heads, which is about a well, an older woman who's still turning heads, and uh, she's still turning heads herself, by the way. She's a real looker, and, but she's a tremendous vocalist, and she just really does a couple of strong performances for us on the album. She, she's a lady from, from the 80s, Ken, that, I, that should have been a, a much bigger star than what she was. She's just got it all. She's, she's really got the whole package. She looks fantastic. She, she sings like an angel. She should have been a huge star. Yeah, she should have been. They, they, you know, Femme Fatale was really big in the U.S. for about six or eight months on MTV. They had a, a, a couple of big hits. Called one was called Waiting for the Big One, and the other one was called Falling In and Out of Love. Uh, but they, uh, for whatever reason, they never, they never really got a second album to take off. But she just, 
she's just tremendously talented. And she's got a pretty loyal following and, you know, hard rock circles and communities around the world that really, really know about the different people from the 80s. We've, we've actually gotten, you know, emails from all over the world uh, about her saying kind of how'd you find her and, and what's she doing these days. And, you know, there's a lot of interest in her out there. That's that's very cool. I hope some some fresh ears will uh, will latch onto her, and uh, folks that may not have heard her will uh, will their ears will prick up, and they'll go back and find some of her. Uh, check out her back catalogue. There's some great stuff. It really is. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad you like it. It's uh, yeah. It, it's fun. It's fun. And, and using four different singers really brings a lot of variety to the album. Our our model for this whole project was the Alan Parsons project. You know, it was two guys making great music and bringing in people to perform and they really did, did such a good job of matching the singers to the individual songs and that's what we really tried to do as well. It took us about a year uh, to find the four singers that we really wanted that we thought were perfect for the songs but uh, I think it, think it really turned out strong and I hope people agree. And, and I do agree with you, Ken. The, the, the album has a, a really strong continuity about it, but the different singers really take you in different directions and, and make it really interesting. You never, never really know where the next song's going to twist and turn, and I really like that. Yeah, yeah, I really like that as well. And, uh, you know, I've listened, I'm glad you say that because I've listened to the song so many times now over the last year, year and a half. It's hard, it's hard sometimes for me to tell, but. I've heard that from people who have just been putting in the album for the first time in the last couple of months. That yeah, it's a pretty enjoyable experience because there's a little bit of variety throughout the whole thing. And and just want to quickly ask, uh, talk about Terry Terry Lou. I, I guess I know his name from his. Uh, he had a brief stint with Great White, and uh, again another fantastic singer who is he's not so well known on this side of the world. Yeah, Terry Lou was the lead singer of XYZ back in the 80s. Uh, he's also been on tour with Great White for the last couple of years, uh, particularly in North America, uh, as Jack has been sick. Um, but T Terry's performance on this album, he does one song on the album called Your Boyfriend is Lame, and uh, it, it's a really unique song. It, it was meant to be very, very tongue-in-cheek, and... Uh, it's a song about kind of the, the hot girl that ends up with the with the dorky or lame guy. I, I wrote the song in honor of all my hot girlfriends growing up who all <laughs> ended up with kind of lame guys in my view. And and uh, But anyway, the song's kind of ACDC-esque and, and tongue-in-cheek. But as I was writing the song, I decided to set the first verse in the U.S. I decided to set the second verse in Mexico and the third verse in France. And it dawned on me as I was writing the lyrics that the that the key line in the song, Your Boyfriend is Lame, I could put in English in the first verse, Spanish in the second verse, and then French in the third verse. So I'd written a song that actually required a, link, a, a singer to sing all three languages. And kind of by, by hook and by crook, we found Terry, uh, which, was, which was amazing for us, because Terry's father is French and his mother's Spanish. <laughs> he grew up speaking French and Spanish at home. He's now been in, in California for about 30 years, and obviously he's fluent in English now as well. He's probably the only hard rock singer on the planet that's fluent in all three languages. So he actually sings all the lines in that song with no accent. Uh, so it was pretty, pretty tremendous for us to be able to find him. He's, and it's a very, a very good song. It's a great fun song indeed. Yeah. Well, it's very tongue-in-cheek, and uh, but I hope people get a real kick out of it. You know, our music's meant to be really fun and party-oriented. Uh, it's not like any of the, the modern stuff that's got a lot of angst or preaching to it. Uh, this is just meant to be a good old, fun rock and roll album, uh, and I hope people hope people just enjoy it. And and lastly but not least, uh, Jeff Paris has has ju done just about everything. He his name popped into my mind from his work with Slash, but he's he's done so much and he's such an accomplished musician. Yeah, Jeff is really the musician's musician. Uh, he's an incredible vocalist, and that's primarily his contribution to this album. But he's also doing other things on this album. Um, he. Uh, uh, he plays a, a, a really mean B3 that we've got on, in the background on several of our songs. Uh, he's the one that worked with Austin, my partner, to add a lot of the Mexican and Latin American percussion to Mexican bar. Um, and he just, 
he, he's just so incredibly talented. I mean, I think he's most known in the U.S. for his keyboard skills, but he's also an incredible guitarist uh, and an incredible vocalist as well. And you know, he, he's done just about everything, you know, kind of from Kevmo, you know, to some of the uh, to some of the real hard rock acts of the 1980s. He's just sort of all over the place, but he's good at everything he does. He is indeed. He's a fine musician, and and listening to the the songs, Ken, the the first thing that pops pops into my mind is I want to see these performed live. So, is there any opportunity that uh, you're going to take this out on the road? Well, we're challenged in that by the fact that we don't have a full time band, and we've got four different lead singers with busy schedules. But yes, I mean the answer to your question is we're definitely trying to plan some live shows and. There's some discussion about doing that uh, later this spring or this summer. Uh, I think we'll probably at least do L.A. and Las Vegas, which is where our singers are based. Uh, but we, we, we have every intention of trying to pull that off. I don't know if it's ever going to turn into a traditional tour that lasts many weeks or months, but we have every intention of trying to do some live performances. But it, like you say, even if you can do a couple of cities and uh, and maybe film it for uh, for us folks over the other side of the world, it would uh, it would be great to see how these songs translate in front of an audience, and I I think they would translate very very well. Oh, thank you so much. Well, it wouldn't take much to get me on a plane right now and come and be sitting on an Australian beach, given how cold it is this morning in France. <laughs> well, my my daughter is in Europe at the moment, so uh, I'm just waiting for her to come home, and she'll. Uh, She'll be in for the shock of her life when she comes from how cold it's been where you are. <laughs> You're right, man. It's really brutal this morning over here. But I would love to put on my swim shorts and get over there. <laughs> that would be fantastic. And and I, I, I guess you're waiting to see how how the success of this pans out, but is there any anything in the works to, to do a, a part two, to do another project? Yeah, I mean, you know, Austin, his brother Rick and I, the three kind of core people on the project, I mean, we just get a thrill out of making music. Um, you know, I had, a, I had a hell of a time doing this, and uh, we, we want to make more albums. We want to we'll probably follow this model again uh, in terms of really trying to choose the very best singers in the world we can find for each of the individual songs. I think a few of our singers will probably show up on the next album, maybe a few new ones as well. But uh, Austin and I have already started banging around ideas for a second album and uh, hope to have something done, uh, you know, within a year or so. Fantastic. Good stuff. Well, I, I wish you every success with, uh, with the resurgence of Rock Ken. It's, uh, it's a great CD, great songs, and uh, lyrically it's, 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 it's a great record, great fun, and uh, I hope it does big things all around the world, including uh, way over here in Australia, mate. Well, I hope it does too. The album was officially released uh, about six or eight hours ago. It went up first in Australia on iTunes, so it's actually available for purchase right now in Australia. Fantastic. Get online, people, and grab yourself a copy. Can I get you to do a quick tag before we finish up, Ken? Sure, no problem. My, my, program, is called, my program is called Sitting in a Bar in Adelaide. Sitting in a bar in Adelaide, okay? If you could do me something like, this is Ken Savage, and you're listening to Sitting in a Bar in Adelaide, or whatever pops into your head whenever you're ready. This is Ken Savage of Blanca White, and you are listening to Sitting in a Bar in Adelaide. Thank you so much, mate. And if you, if you ever get into Australia, uh, look me up, come and say hello. It would be great to, uh, great to actually meet you. I would love to do that. If I ever get there, I will certainly look you up, and I appreciate all you're doing, for not only for this album, but for, for rock in general. And, and please, next time you see Mr. Shortino, give him my best regards from the other side of the world. I certainly will do that. And uh, it's been a pleasure to say hello, mate. Thank you so much, and I, uh, I wish you every success. All right, you have a great evening over there, and thanks for spreading the good word for us. Cheers, Ken. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.